Apocalypse. This is Battle Tanks Global Assault, the second game in the Battle Tank series. A third person tank shooter with a sprawling 18 level campaign where you and your wife race across the world in a bid to rescue your kidnapped son from the Twisted Queen Lord Cassandra. There is a wide variety of levels ranging from rescuing people, escorting convoys, blowing stuff up, and surviving waves on waves of enemy tanks. Though you'd be forgiven if all you remember was blowing up one or three of your friends in one of the many versus game modes. Nuke deployed. Like all games, there is a small but persistent speedrunning community dedicated to shaving as much time off this run as they can. World record progression is a fascinating topic, but the story I want to tell today is a different one. How did the world record just drop by five minutes overnight and then keep falling? This is the history of glitches in Battletank's Global Assault and the discovery of the Holy Grail of Skeps. But let's roll the timeline back to the beginning and cover some of the more well-known glitches. This isn't some game that only had casual runners. The top runners were using every trick at their disposal, starting with the neutral reset. Have you ever plugged your controller in and found that without touching the stick, the game acts like you have it shoved in a corner? This isn't stick drift. This is an offset neutral position, because you had the controller lying face down when you plugged it in. The way the N64 measures the analog stick is the same way a trackball mouse measures movement. This sensor pair is counting the number of holes it sees as this wheel turns. This method is good, but it has a massive drawback. It does not know its absolute position. It can count 10 steps from neutral, but where's neutral? The controller has no idea where neutral is, so it has to make an assumption. And that is, the stick is centered at neutral when you plug it in or turn the console on. Nintendo obviously knew this would be a problem, so you can press left, right, and start to reset the neutral position to wherever the stick is. I think you can see where this is going. Since Battle Tanks uses the angle of the stick to determine how fast you go, an efficient programmer at 3DO realized they didn't need a maximum speed limit because the controller would physically limit you. You couldn't physically push the stick any further up. This, obviously, is false. Performing a neutral reset with the control stick held all the way down tricks the controller into thinking a centered stick is 100% up. Now pushing up makes you go forwards at double speed. This is a massive time save if you can handle the speed. This is a well-known oversight on many N64 games and present in the earliest records of Battle Tanks runs on the speedruns.com page. So let's dive more into the specific ones for Global Assault. The next old glitch we will be looking at is the skew. These tanks do not turn very well. If you drive it into a tight spot, it can be very difficult to back them out because the tanks get stuck on the walls. By wedging the motor tank between a wall and a tunnel and trying to turn around, one of the treads can get clipped into the ground. You can then just drive out of the ground and into the air, skipping over some walls. This was known about since the game's development, as one of the programmers commented in an old forum that this was an oversight due to the way the game fakes jumping over berms. The driving into the air part, at least. They weren't sure about why the tank was clipping into the ground, they must have had other things on their mind. Tanks. 
The last bit of old tech was shooting through walls. All walls in the game are supposed to block your bullets. At least when the devs don't forget to add the collision to one side, they do. But there's just one itsy bitsy little problem. Well, technically there's two. The Moto Tank and Rattler. People figured out, by just riding headfirst into walls, that these two tanks could just shoot through them. Battle Tanks actually simulates the flight time of every bullet, but cuts a few corners by just spawning bolts at the end of the barrel. Some of the tanks have a pretty good alignment between the barrel and the bullet, while others are less accurate. It just so happens that with the Moto Tank and the Rattler, the spawn point is a little too far forward. So shooting through walls is a misnomer. Rather, in a very silly oversight, the end of the barrel extends past the hitbox for the tank, and the bullets simply spawn in on the other side of the wall. There are two levels that get completely cheesed by this. Drive-In and Eiffel Tower have objectives based on blowing up a building that is hard to get to, but you can easily see. So, shooting through walls completely trivializes those levels. It's especially bad on Eiffel Tower, as the building with the mind control beacon is directly ahead, leading to an easy 8 second win. This is where I enter the picture. Or more accurately, Lolaway and me. We started running the two-player co-op category, and I started looking at the game in a more analytical way. There you go. There's the eight. That's the eight. I don't. I really don't think it can get any faster than that. You're probably right. That's as fast as it's going to be. You have no idea how wrong you are, bro. All we need to do is get the muzzle of the tank through the wall, and after messing around a bit with some of the other tanks, I found something. The tanks don't have collision on the cannon barrel. So if you park it next to a wall, you could rotate the turret and poke it through the wall. This was huge. The default tank, the M1A1, could shoot through walls, and because of the way the menus worked, this could break the tied world record. This is the tank selection carousel. This very cool, but very slow menu lets you pick your next tank, if you have enough tank bucks to buy it. Yeah, that's right, buy. You can die over and over without consequence until you run out of money. You will fail the stage when you can't buy any more tanks, but the game is flush with cash, so that never happens. Unfortunately, the Rattler is at the very back of this glorified shot menu, and game time advances in the menu. So if we could get out of the menu faster... I'm mistiming my edge, that's the issue. <laughs> Come on, end. End already! That's probably- End! Give me the seven! Give me it! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I knew there had to be more to break in this game. Single player appeared to be very stable, but the co-op mode was a whole different story. The game loads less hazards and decoration in co-op mode, so it's trying to save resources where it can. The majority of co-op runs at this point were done by either a single player, playing in co-op mode, or the two players would split up and take on different parts of the level. The next logical step in breaking the game would be both players doing something they shouldn't together. And just get in front of me, and now we just drive into each other, and yep. I'm out of bounds. He's out of bounds now. It's, it's, like, actually that easy. It is <laughs> It's so easy. easy. <laughs> and I'm out of bounds now. Hooray! This is the Goliath push. While not limited to just the Goliath tank, it was the best tank to get out of bounds. When two tanks drive into each other, the game tries to find a valid spot to move the tanks to. Both players can't occupy the same space, so it ends up warping one tank past the other. The massive size of the Goliath ensures that the nearest piece of available ground is on the other side of the wall. The small size of Rattlers and Moto Tanks made them very easy to clip, which was good as they were the fastest tanks in the game. That felt faster. It has to do with the edge. It has to. How we beat World Record for single? No, they're not the same. No! Oh, I told you! I told you! 22, dude! It's nice. so possible! Look at that! 
For comparison, let's look at the single player route. Take note of the minimap. I've composited the co-op run on top of it so you can see the route difference. Now, let's look at Tower Bridge again. The objective is to reach the other side of the bridge, but only one of you needs to make it there. Player 1 spawns in a better spot, so Player 2 has nothing really to do on this level. Player 1 then has to deal with tight corners, mines, and tanks that can take you out in a single hit. But with the Goliath push, you could pop outside the confines of the map and avoid all that. The tricks and tech in the co-op route was diverging from the single player route and forming an identity of its own. The speedrun was fast, the new glitches were cool, and records that I thought were out of reach were getting edged up by a few seconds here and there, even with my notoriously bad aim. There was just one problem. That was hot too. Like I like how you that did. was hot. Yep, 24. 24. Let's go. We all hated playing the level Assault on San Francisco. You're watching a world record run of it right now. Sped up, of course. And you'll see why. At this point, every level in the game can be completed in under a minute or two. All except this one. For the second to last level in the game, it has a very simple objective defeat all tanks that Cassandra has sent to take you out. However, unlike other defeat all enemy levels, you can't destroy the tank spawners and there's no nuke hidden somewhere. You have to wait for the game to slowly spawn in somewhere around 70 to 80 tanks and take them all out one by one. All the momentum you have built up over the run comes to a screaming halt here. The world record we are watching clocks in at 9 minutes and 9 seconds, but the length isn't the real problem on this level. It's its inconsistency. The game seems to spawn a random number of tanks. This level is an auto-scroller where you don't know if your time will be closer to 9 minutes or 10. So how did this happen? That's 4 minutes faster than record. Well we have finally reached the precipice on this timeline. The stage is set. The pieces are in place. This is how we found the Holy Grail. We needed data. Testing and gathering data was how I broke the other levels, and there was a lot about this level we didn't know. The number of tanks we destroyed seemed to vary from run to run, the rhinos and the rattlers stopped spawning after a while, and we didn't know why, and we didn't know what affected the spawn rate, if anything did at all. So I loaded up an emulator, opened the memory map, and realized I had a degree in engineering, not computer science. So I had no idea what I was doing. Within the month, I gave up, closed the memory map, and started counting the number of enemies that spawned in by hand. After getting some counts in easy mode, the difficulty we speedrun on, I changed the difficulty. It was unknown what exactly changed on the harder difficulties other than the enemy AI, so maybe they spawned faster and that increased difficulty. To ensure I was gathering relevant data, I stuck to the known route, grabbed the gun buddy's power up, and head to the rhino spawn. The gun buddy is an autonomous turret that will target the nearest tank and shoot it until it is dead. It even gives you the credit for the kill! What a pal! At the rhino spawn, we put the buddies on the far side. This way, when the next rhino spawns in, it will turn to face the player, exposing its weak backside to the buddies, which can easily dispatch it. More buddies are acquired, and dropped off at the rattler spawn in much the same way. Now I could just sit in the middle of the map and take pot shots at the hornets and infernos while counting up the spawns on the minimap. This did not go to plan. 
I got the buddies out, but then I was swarmed. I lost my main tank and spent all my rainy bucks to buy more tanks. I was swarmed again and died again. And this is why I was using the emulator. If you recall from earlier, I said this game was full of bucks. And yes, by the time you get to the back half of the run, you have over 200 bucks. But when you load into a level using the level select cheat code, you only start with 30. So I wanted to have some save states ready. Hitting a game over halfway through the level would be a waste of five minutes. So I reloaded the save state and kept going. I made it a little further that time, but ultimately died again. And before I could reload the save, the level completed. Four minutes early. Attack on SF, the nine minute long slog, had just been beaten in five minutes, with only a screenshot for proof, and nobody knew why. Something remarkable had happened around the 50th kill that needed more testing, and it had something to do with death and tank bucks. So I went live on Twitch. With an audience of zero, it was back to save states and pushing the self-destruct button. Within 10 minutes of reloading saves, after randomly dying, it happened again. This time, 4 minutes 12 seconds. Faster still, but not a world record as I had been loading from save states repeatedly. It was time to do this on console. So, with a vague idea of what was going on, all the way and I fried up a stream and attempted to hit the jackpot for the third time. I'm really irked that I think you're right about Bump, about it being points. Oh yeah, I know. It's definitely points, dude. As soon as I, I as soon as you told me like what was happening, I was like, it's gotta be points. How else is it gonna award tank bucks? It's gotta know points. It's probably at like 10k. 10k it awards tank bucks. I, I, I'm, I'm, that's my bet right now. Kill one more tank and explode. X tank bucks awarded. Level complete. There you go. That's world record, dude. That's world record. Good job! <laughs> it totally! It's a thousand points! I told you! I told you! It had to be! <laughs> Did you win? Uh... 409 yeah, new world record! A, there you go! Be better than our emulator! <laughs> Four, our emulator was 412. 409. Was, on console, on everything. I was hardly paying attention, by the way. I was getting shot left and right. This is totally RT. Yeah, now since we know it's points and you can see the points, definitely. This is points glitch, and it's a little bit of everything. Bullet flight time, the game not pausing in the carousel, coding oversights, gun buddies, and the tank buck's life system all rolled up into a perfect storm. Starting with tank bucks, no one had given any thought to this power-up, except that it's not just a power-up, it's a points reward both on the level complete screen and in the level. Other than the convoy staying alive on the convoy levels, bucks is how the game determines if you can keep playing. Here's what's happening. A shot is fired, then all four C buttons are pressed simultaneously to trigger the self-destruct. Upon losing the last tank, the game starts the end of level subroutine. But if you notice, the bullet is still in flight. The bullet needs to be in the air long enough for the subroutine to start but not so long, the routine finishes before the bullet connects. In this approximate one second window, that bullet needs to take out an enemy tank worth enough points to reach the 10k reward. Tank bucks are awarded, bringing your total from 0 to 10 bucks, and time still advances in the carousel menu. So when the game checks the tank bucks total to see which end screen needs to use, it sees there is a non-zero number of tank bucks. Since the end of level sequence is running and you have tank bucks, the only logical state the game can be in is level complete. I had somehow lined up this exact sequence only with the gun buddy firing the bullet. 
Points glitch transformed the game overnight. Points carried over between levels, so a new category was born. Any percent. The old route, now called no points glitch, was old news. Why would you want to play the slowest level in the game when you could just skip it? New world records dropped as we got better point totals going into Assault, but that wasn't all. Points glitch worked on every level, so the route became a wild cross of being the short levels normally and using points glitch to skip the rest. That's a sub gone, and there's one more sub over here. Yeah. It's only if you can you have to kill a tank, like that freaking... <gasps> There we go, that's the level. 1950. <laughs> GG, sub 20. By the time the dust settled, this 22 minute speedrun had been cut in half. But by far the most ridiculous thing of this discovery was the sheer improbability of it even happening at all. That might have been too late. It was too late. God damn it. A normal playthrough of the game builds a massive tank bucks reserve. Considerable time in the any percent run is spent wasting tank bucks. Individual level attempts start you at zero points. Attack on SF is the only level where it's possible to rack up enough points to earn extra tank bucks mid-level. Not to mention, the game starts you with 30 bucks and a free goliath, so you have to die multiple times on a pretty easy level to run out of bucks. Then, and only then, would you have the right conditions to trigger points glitch. So the first discovery was a fluke. The second occurrence was hit by repeatedly self-destructing at random times after the 48th kill. And in the run where it was console verified for the first time, I missed the final shot. Meaning the f <laughs> gun buddy got the glitch Activating kill shot all three times. Hey, no one said you had to be good at video games to speedrun them. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. What you're watching now is the current world record of 1057 by Jai Motion, but only when they use points glitch. Not every level uses the glitch, and this isn't even all the ones that do, so I highly encourage you to watch the full run. This is my first, and likely only, speedrunning history video. I created this video because I felt like I was in a creative rut making only Polybridge videos, and I wanted to try something new. Battletank's Global Assault is one of my favorite games for the N64, and I always wished that someone would cover the wild history of this game. I eventually decided that I would be the one to tell its story. It really is a hidden gem for the console, and I fondly remember playing the co-op with my dad. Well, he beat the levels. I was a destructive kid that just wanted to flatten every building. Maybe this inspires you to play the game. Maybe even speedrun the game. Maybe not. I just wanted to make you care about the game as much as I do, if just for a moment. If you had as much fun watching this video as I had making it, consider subscribing. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make next. Probably some polybridge stuff that I promised I'd do, but if this video does well, I might start branching out a bit. The Polybridge community just completed a challenge that was thought to be impossible. That might be a story worth telling. Regardless, I'm just one guy making videos for fun in my spare time. So this channel may go dark for a bit, but I will circle back around again. A highly elliptical orbit is still on orbit. I will return, but until then, you've been watching The Lazy Comet, and I hope you'll keep me in your orbit. Thanks for watching.